All right, this was last week for even when we were with you. This we ordered 10 of them in Exodus chapter 20. Yeah, this we commanded you that if any, yep, neither should he eat. If you're able to work, you've got to work or you don't get to eat. That's what he's saying. God prizes work, puts a premium on work, and he doesn't want us being lazy and is living off handouts. And there were people in the church trying to do that. God God said through Paul, no, nope, that doesn't work. We're not going to allow that. I'm going to tolerate it. If you're not at work, you don't get to eat. Hunger is a good motivator. Then Tuesday, we look at this. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen, for the things which are seen. Uh -huh. Amen. We talked about that last time. And then this one. Now, this is all about... God giving us grace when we're going through difficult times, trouble times, painful times. And he's giving us one of the reasons for allowing us to go through those times. And it's kind of like a, an upward spiral kind of thing. So, so, so this is talking about God. And this is what he does for us when we're going through a difficult time. You want to guess what that A word is for, for a difficult time? To send them for a time of tribulation or trial or difficulty or I tell you a word that would work, but it's not it. It's not adversity, but that would work. But it's it's another word that starts with an A that means a painful time. A lot of times we think of it as being a time of sickness, but in this it doesn't mean necessarily sickness. It means all kinds of difficult times. It starts with an AF. Nope, that, that means kind of wealthy times. Uh, AFF, it does start with AFFL though. <laughs> AFFLI. No, AFFLIC. <laughs> That's an I O N ending. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who comforts us in all our affliction. Oh, I already, you didn't guess that one yet. I gave it away. Shoot. But that's what God does for us. In our affliction, he comforts us. So that, here's the reason, we may be able to, no, same idea. He comforts us so that we can comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort. No, it's the same idea all the way through. Comforted by God, yeah, yeah. It really turns out to be kind of easy because all the C words are comfort and all the A words are affliction. So, but this is an important verse because you know a lot of times people wonder why am I going through this difficult time? Lord, why? Well, usually there are lots of reasons. There really are lots of reasons, but one of them is because He's preparing us to encourage others. God uses that cycle of encouragement. When you're going through a difficult time, one of the most encouraging things that can happen to you. Is for somebody to come to you and say, I've been through something just like that. That won't be exactly the same, but it'll be similar. And when they say, I've been through something just like that, and, th and God got me through it. He'll get you through it, too. I don't know if you remember, but the, earlier in the year, we had a verse that we looked at that had three parts. It's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, there's no testing or temptation or trial, can be translated either way, taken you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tested above what you're able, but will with the testing provide the way to escape, that you might be able to bear it. And the first part of that, there's no testing taken you, but such as is common to man. God intends for that to be comforting, because what we're going through, others have gone through. It's common to man. If God got them through it, he can get us through it. So if somebody's been through a tough time, and they come to you and say, I, I, you're, and you're going through a tough time, and they've been through it too, they can say, I know what you're going through. Now, it has to be, you have to go through it, though it doesn't work very well. For example, my mom, when my sister died, my sister was 20 years old when she died. And my mom grieved enormously. She'd taken care of Ginger all her life. She'd, she'd had a, a heart defect from birth. And, and mom just grieved and grieved and grieved. And there were people who tried to comfort her by saying, I know what you're going through. And, and it would make mom angry because they had not lost a child. <laughs> And she said, they don't know what I'm going through. 
I don't want to say they know what they're going. They don't know what I'm going through. So it didn't help. It worked. But if somebody came to her and said, I lost a child too, and they could grieve together. You see what I'm saying? That 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 was comforting. Um, same kind of thing with my wife. I, you may know, but my, several years ago, my wife went through breast cancer. It was rough for both of us and a very painful time in our lives. But God got us through, and he comforted her and strengthened her through the whole thing. She was amazing. And now, of course, she's for many, many years now. This was, this was still while she was there. She was at Little Drugs at the time, but she's she's been there many years now. But she's, she's still a compounding specialist there, compounds all the medicines they make there at Little Drugs. And, and there have been many women come to her with breast cancer because they know she went through it. And she gets to comfort them, and, and, and they can talk about what, how, what her experience was and how God got her through it. And, and that's, that's what God wants us to do. So he's, you're, you, you've already been through some afflictions, and you're going to be through, go through more. Some of them are going to be really, really painful, really, really, really uncomfortable. And if you'll keep your focus on God, and let him get you through it in his word. He's got scriptures and, and, and maybe get some comfort from other people. Eventually, you'll come through it. And then God will bring people into your life who's going through something similar. And he's saying, now I've comforted you in your affliction so you can comfort other people who are going through affliction too. He, he, wants us to, he wants to comfort us and he wants us to spread that to others, that same comfort. So it's an awesome purpose of affliction and difficulty and trial that uh, ought to encourage us in the fact that we get to comfort others. That's pretty encouraging. All right, let's see if we can memorize it. Who comforts us in all our affliction. Who comforts us in all our affliction. Who comforts us in all our affliction. So that we may be able to comfort those. So that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. Who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves with the comfort with the comfort with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by god who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by god Mm -hmm. So that we'll be able to comfort those who are in need affliction with, with the, with the, God. with the comfort with which we are, we are comforted by God. With the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Yeah. But just about God, that's good. Okay, I'm ready to pray. Anything so else? Just one huh? one year, so okay. I one past, but you'd like to do well, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Is is this what what science course is this general science or what's it called? Biology. biology. Okay. There's general, there's physical biology, AP biology, and then okay. chemistry. Okay. Okay. And and Ashley teaches all those. Okay. Well, Father, thank you so much for this day and thank you for your scripture that you gave us. Thank you for this word of comfort. Thank you for giving us some insight into why you allow us to go through difficult times. We know when you do, you always comfort us if you'll really look to you and we'll look to your word and we'll look to others who've been through similar kinds of things where we can be comforted by these things and by your truth and by your promises and your encouragement and your presence. And then, Lord, I pray that when you do bring us through, and you always do, that we will be able to help others. Lord, you, you, you know how to bring others into our lives who are struggling the same kind of way and that we'll be able to comfort them by helping them understand how you comforted us. So help us to spread that comfort and when others are struggling. And Lord, thank you for the comfort you give us when we're struggling. Thank you for being an awesome father. Thank you for being incredibly powerful, El Shaddai, for being the creator of the universe, for being an incredible artist. When we look at your creation, it's beautiful. Being an incredible engineer, when we look at your creation, it's incredibly engineered and it's incredibly complex. It's amazing how you put it together. Lord, we praise you for your knowledge and insight and your wisdom. Lord, you know all the details of every molecule of your creation. You know what's going on in our lives, every detail. You know what needs to be done. You know what decisions we need to make, when we need to make them. 
Lord, we thank you that you're a God of wisdom. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of love and compassion and mercy and grace toward us that we get to experience because of what Jesus did for us on the cross where you showed your love most intensely. We thank you for being a God of everlasting, overwhelming, superabundant love and grace. Thank you, Lord. You're amazing, and we want to worship you well, serve you well, live well for you, bring you lots of glory. And I uh, pray you'd help us do that today in some small way that we'll bring you glory. I want to do pray for Cole and others who are taking tests today. This science test coming up, the biology test. So I pray you'd help them to think clearly, not make any careless mistakes, but to remember the things he's learned and to do well on this test. Uh, Lord, I pray for all of us to be able to finish school strong. We're just about over this year, Lord. But I thank you for the ones who've worked hard all year long. And I pray that we'll uh, just be keeping our focus on you as we finish this year up here in these next few days. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for loving us so much. I pray you'd help us today to learn just a little more math as we focus on uh, some of these math problems that will be typical ACT problems. Help these guys to learn just a little bit more, building little by little upon their knowledge of mathematics so they can do well when they take the ACT. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, we really are getting closer and closer to the end of this test, so don't expect all these to be easy. Some of them I may kind of just work with you instead of letting you. We'll see. As we go around here. Let's see. And we're not in a hurry, of course. So it's. Um, I'm going to let you work on that one first. Get paper and calculator. And, uh, and if you uh, if you just don't know how to start, you don't know what this talking about, feel free to ask me. I'm not trying to, you know, if you're just totally lost on it, just ask me. But if you can, if you can kind of figure it out. Absolutely don't know what it's talking about. I will help you think about it a little bit. That's not a bad idea. That would definitely, that's one way to solve that problem. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, I usually send it to you, don't I? Yeah. Uh, I think you made 99. Either 98 or 99. You know, I only took one point off or two points off or something smart. I'm sorry. I usually send you those. I, I forgot about it.
thought it might be negative too, but I don't think that's right. Okay. Uh, you, want me to, you, want me to, you want me to show you how to think about it? Yeah. All right. I did it the way the parentheses okay. correctly. So. Okay. Well, let me show you why that, what that means. Let's, let's, let's make sure we understand what the problem means. The x-intercept, you know what that's talking about? The x-line, not the y-intercept. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's saying it, it is. Uh, the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. So wherever it is, you know, it could be anywhere here. We don't know where it is, but it's, it's where it crosses the x-axis. Now, what do you know about y when it's crossing the x-axis? What's y equal to? When it's on the x-axis? Zero. zero. Yeah, you're not going up or down. When it's on the x-axis, y is zero. So the x-intercept means y is zero. The y-intercept means x is zero. You with me there? Okay. So y is zero. That means... Somewhere, if this crosses the x-axis, y will be zero. So you put a zero in there, and you got this equation to solve to figure out what x is. That's where putting it into in your factoring is what you're doing. When you said put it into plus you're factoring it. That's where this will help. So you said, okay, let me use full backwards. This has to be x. This has to be x. Okay, it's negative 2 and negative 2. Very good. So that's negative 2x and negative 2x. This is negative 4x and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. That's good. It's factored. Now here's here's you missed one thing here. If this is zero, that means one of these is zero, right? Because something multiplied by zero is zero. So either x minus two is zero, or x minus two is zero. And since they're the same, there's just one solution: two, two, two. When x is two, two minus two is zero. You see it? Add two to both sides, you get x equals two. Add two to both sides, you get x equals two. That's where it crosses the x-axis. I said negative. Yeah, it's two. Now, that's all you really need to know. But I want to. I want to. You got your calculator handy? I want you to graph this as y one and look at it. Graph y x squared minus four x. Uh huh. Yeah. Put that in your calculator and graph y equals y y equals that. I don't think so. Just graph it. And let's see what happens. Well, okay, it, it, it's okay. Hit, hit Y equals again. <coughs> I guess. I tell you what. Uh, yeah, you know how to get rid of shade. Just go over here. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, go over there again, and uh, go down to this. Go down now, right here. When you, no, go up, back up. When that's blinking, I think hit enter. No, go back up. Hit right, the right arrow, or left arrow, either one. There, well, you want it equals. That's what you want. Now you can make it. Now it will take away the shading. But you also may want to change the window. Hit window and go to standard. What's oh, already? Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Hit window up here. Did you hit window? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me look at you see. Uh. <clears throat> oh, shoot. <coughs> uh, oh, zoom is what I wanted to do. Zoom, standard, number six. And that puts you back to a standard window, and it'll look more normal. Now you can see that graph. It's a parabola. When you have an X squared... Uh, that's that's called a quadratic equation. It's always going to be a parabola. And the parabola comes down and touches the x-axis. And you can either use the trace key and kind of see about where, or you can just eyeball it and say, well, I can see that touches right about where 2 is, you know. But if you use the trace key and pull it down to where it touches the x-axis, you'll get it approximately. It's going to be real close to 2. Now, you're just approximating because you're kind of not, you know, not zooming real close, but. You know, zooming in. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, if this is one and this is two, 
this is where it touches and <coughs> got a tickle in my throat and uh, and it doesn't really cross the x-axis this mine crossed it but the fact that both answers are two both these give you a two tells you that it's a parabola that just touches the x-axis and then goes back most of the time when you factor these things you get two different numbers which is the two places it crosses you know if you had one cross down here and up over here you have this number and this number but if it just touches the x-axis you just got one yeah 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 there yeah now you say one more thing about this just so you'll recognize the term if you hear it when you're solving a quadratic equation most of the time there are two solutions Sometimes there's no real solution because this thing will be like if you graphed it and it, and it looked like this it never did cross the x-axis. So there's no real solution. There would be two imaginary roots in those cases. But sometimes when, when it just touches, there's one solution. And this is often called a double root, a double root because each of these is called a root. You're talking about squares to solve, you get square roots, and each of them is called a root. And since it's the same, it's called a double root. That's just because they're, they're, they're trying to emphasize it when you're doing quadratics, you get two solutions. You with me? Yeah. Uh -uh. Now, before we leave this problem, Um, one other thing you could do is you, you have to know that the x-intercept is when y is 0. So you've got 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. And you can substitute each of these in one at a time to see what makes it true. Yeah, you can, you can just substitute these for x one at a time to see when that makes it, what makes it true. Now, there's a way to do that uh, with your calculator. You remember how you store a number in x? Yeah. You know, like, like, go ahead, let's just skip to the answer. We know it's a 2 this time, but store an x where the uh, 2 where the x is. Hit 2 and then store an x. Uh, S T O down, down there. Yeah, hit, hit two, two first though. You clear that. Hit, hit the number two, and then store. No, you're you're hitting second. Just hit the number two. There you go. And store, and then hit the X. Two, two, and S T O, and then the X. Just three keys. Two, store, X, enter. Yeah. Now, every time it sees an X, it's going to think it's a 2. Now, hit this. Don't graph it. Just just punch that into your calculator. X squared minus 4X plus 4. And it gave a 0, right? Which means that worked. The 2, when you substitute a 2 there. Now, this is easy enough. You can do it in your head. 2 squared is 4 minus 8. That's negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So, it cancels out. So, it works. And you could try each of these one after another, either with your calculator or in your head. This is pretty easy. You can do it in your head. So if you didn't remember the stuff about the parabola and graphing it and looking at it and seeing where it crossed the x-axis, you could do it that way. There's more than one way to do a lot of these problems. <clears throat> See if you can... Figure that one out. That's a comma after that 3P over 2T. That's, you know, what that little strange mark is. It's supposed to be a comma.
Yes. 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 Yeah. So let's just let me do it real quick. But you got it. This is just a simple salt for one variable in terms of the other variables. It's an equation with four different variables. And which is equivalent to T means you got to, you know, one of these is the same as T. So you got to solve this equation for T. So you can multiply both sides by 2. 2x over y equals 3p over t. Divide both, uh, multiply both sides by t. 2x t. I, sh I should have done that, should I? Uh, let's just do this. Let's start again. <laughs> I tease the denominator there. So the easiest thing to do here is cross multiply, probably, because it's like a proportion. Multiply both sides by t, and you get 2x t equals 3py, multiply both sides by 2t, multiply both sides by y, and then you divide both sides by 2x, get the t by itself. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Solve for one variable in terms of the other variables. And there's one that I think is relatively easy uh, and it's toward the end of the test, so that's why you need to go through the test when you do the real test and do all the ones that you say, oh, I know how to do that. Do those first and then go back to the ones that you're going to have to struggle with a little bit. Let's mess with that one. Put those numbers down on your paper. Think about that a little bit. See if you can see the key to solving that one. Um, let me see. I've had that here somewhere. I haven't done it yet. Um, that's not what I got. Let me see. Let's talk about it. Do you remember the, the meaning of the word mean and median? The median is the middle of a set of numbers. Mm -hmm. Means average Okay, that's good. You got to know that. And they give you four of them, 14, 8, 16, and 14. And they want you to tell what the fifth one is, if the mean and the median are equal. Now, to find the median, you got to put them in order, right? Yeah. So you got an 8 and two 14s and a 16. But there's a fifth number that we don't know. Here's the key to this problem. You got to realize, wait a minute. Wherever that fifth number goes, what's the median going to be? What? The median is the number right in the middle. Yeah. No, no. You're going to have five numbers here. I've got another number I've got to put in. But let's just make up a few numbers, just pretend. Let's suppose that one of them is a three. I've got three, eight, 14, 14, 16. What's the median here? 14. 14. That's the one in the middle. All right. What if I, what if the other number, the fifth number that we don't know is 25? What's the median? 14. 14. What are you beginning to realize? That the yeah, the median has got to be 14. There's no way around that. Now, that doesn't mean the answer is the fifth number is 14. Be careful. 
the median is 14 though because no matter where you put the number i mean if you put the number 13 in here you know if you put it to the left here then this number is going to be in the middle if you put it to the right this number is going to be in the middle so you know it's got to be a 14. that's the clue right there that's the key you got to realize that since there are two 14s in the middle right now that no matter where you put that fifth number 14 is the median okay 14 is the median that means 14 is the mean All right, now with that information, can you figure out the fifth number? That's it. That's it. How did you do it? I just um, I, I divide, I added it and then divided it by five by every number. The sums I'm way to do it, but it won't work. Okay. Um, there are two mathematical ways to do this that are best. You know, if fourteen is the mean and there are five numbers then the total is going to be 5 times 14, 70. These four add up to 20, 34, 42. Thirty. I'm sorry. I said twenty. I thought this guy. I made a mistake somewhere. Thirty, forty-four, fifty-two. So I got fifty-two to subtract from seventy. Leaves me eighteen. I need eighteen more for the average to be fourteen. So that's where the eighteen comes in. You see what I did? I knew that fourteen was the mean because they told me it's the same as the median. I knew fourteen was the median. I figured that out by looking at the numbers. It can't be anything but fourteen. Fourteen is the mean. I did my, and there are five numbers, so I'm multiplying by five. And then I subtract this sum from that product, and I'll get the mean. Now, if it's hard for you to think like that, you can make a couple of average pies. If you remember, uh, let me just, I was going to erase them, but I'll just do this. I know them, you know, by the way, let me just remind you what an average pie is. The total is up here. The number of items and the average down here. So the number of items times the average is the total. Total divided by the number is the average. Total by the average is the number. That's just a memory device to help you do averages, means. I know the mean is 14 I'm sorry I know there are five numbers and I know the mean is the average is 14 so the total is 5 times 14 which is 70 <clears throat> I know here I've got four numbers the total of which is 30 44.52. And actually, I don't need to even figure out what the average that is. I don't care. 70 to 52 is 18 more points. 
So I don't know if the average pile helped you much there or not. That's probably a good one to stop on today. Let me see how I did this though. If I use the average power, I think I'll probably just. Yeah, I just did the first thing I did. Okay. All right. Anything else before I pray? Thanks, Father, for all your blessings. Thank you for this day. Help us to walk with you the rest of it and to stay in this battle you placed us in. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.